Welcome. We're so happy you can join us for this month's program. I'm here with my good friend and co-host, Leon Weaver. There he is. Leon, welcome. David, I'm delighted to be here with you. Now, I'd like to tell you a little something about Leon. When I was invited into Bethel in 1990, I was assigned to the service department, and Leon was one of the overseers. Now, in the service department, at times, we had to deal with some very difficult matters, and uh, sometimes you needed advice. And I, I could always rely on Leon to help me out. I'd go into his office, he'd set aside whatever it was he was working on, he'd listen, and then he'd give his input. I really appreciated the experience I acquired in the service department, and Leon was certainly part of it. So this is one reason why I have love and respect for that brother. Now, Leon, what can we look forward to in this month's program? Actually, hold it a minute there, Leon. What an awkward introduction. What have we just seen? David Splain apparently trying to feign humility, I would argue, by giving an opening ramble about Leon Weaver. Actually, it's interesting what he's saying there about the service department. He says, In the service department, at times, we had to deal with some very difficult matters. And uh, sometimes you needed advice. And I, I could always rely on Leon to help me out. The service department is the box of horrors at Watchtower. The service department is where all the skeletons are, where all of the truly evil stuff gets done. And I've made the point previously on this channel, what's interesting is when you look at all the governing body members, they've all had, prior to being appointed to the governing body, they've all had some experience working with or in the service department. It's almost like a proving ground, it seems. <laughs> they only want to appoint people to the governing body who have seen the organization at its absolute worst. Because the service department is responsible for the cover-up of abuse, for making sure that policies are perpetuated and enforced that serve to put children at risk, that serve to bring children and predators into proximity with each other and make sure predators aren't held accountable to the authorities. So anyone who spends any amount of time in the service department, we'll see all that. And David Splain there is talking about difficult matters. And sometimes you needed advice. Well, difficult matters is putting it mildly. We're talking about, quite frankly, criminal activity or activity that should be criminal. If it's, again, bringing children into proximity with predators who are off the radar, being kept off the radar of the authorities. But what a weird setup with David Splain sat at the desk and Leon Weaver in the distance, <laughs> almost kind of below his throne. That's what it felt like. And I couldn't help but mentally compare this episode introduction with the introduction for the last time David Splain was on JW Broadcasting, which was September 2019. As you can see, I have a friend with me as co-host. Uh, we are friends, aren't we? Yes, we are, David. Oh, that's so good <laughs> to hear. Uh, this is Herman Van Selm. He's a helper to the writing committee. I'm here with my good friend and co-host, Leon Weaver. There he is. Leon, welcome. David, I'm delighted to be here with you. I mean, I have to assume this is all about social distancing. I struggled to think of what other reason there could be for, in one episode, David Splain being all huggy and touchy-feely <laughs> with his co-host, who sat right next to him. And in the next episode, he gets the desk to himself, and he's almost sat on his throne with his helper below him, looking down on him. It's not good optics, is it? 
I get that it's probably to do with social distancing, but you wouldn't even have an issue with the optics on this if David Splain could, quite frankly, just host the frigging episode. I mean, what is his problem? He seemingly cannot get through an episode on his own, unlike other governing body members. And what's interesting is David Splain really seems to fancy himself as a speaker, as someone who presents well on camera. Well, if that's the case, why can't he lower himself? Why can't he humble himself and introduce some of the interview segments, some of the various segments that Leon Weaver will be drafted in to introduce? Why can't David Splain do that? It's almost like... No, I have to be the one who imparts spiritual wisdom and spiritual knowledge. I'm not going to be bothering with all of these little segments about someone's story or some music video or what have you. I have more important things to do. That seems to be David Splain's whole thing. And in this case, let's say due to social distancing... It's resulted in some terrible optics if you compare his previous appearance in September 2019 with his latest appearance. Through his prophet Isaiah, Jehovah made a wonderful promise, one that's being fulfilled today. We can read about it at Isaiah 60 and verse 17. Instead of the copper, I will bring in gold. And instead of the iron, I will bring in silver. Instead of the wood, copper, and instead of the stones, iron. And I will appoint peace as your overseers and righteousness as your task assigners. Well, now this reference to overseers and task assigners, that sounds like organization, doesn't it? So uh, what is Jehovah telling us? He's saying that we can expect to see organizational arrangements getting better and better. Well... If you've been associated with the truth for a while, I'm sure you'll agree that Isaiah's prophecy is being fulfilled today. So for this broadcast, I thought we'd review some of the improvements we've seen just since World War II. That's the period most of us are familiar with. Now, some of you will be hearing about these things for the first time. Others will have lived through it all. And for them, it'll bring back fond memories. So let's go back. It'll be fun. I call this part, Do You Remember When? If there's one thing I've learned from watching David Splain on JW Broadcasting, it's that whenever he says it'll be fun, it's never fun. Well, now, how well would you do in spotting a statement that is slightly off and making it more accurate? Would you like to find out? Of course you would. It'll be fun. So let's take a quiz that I'll call you be the editor. We're going to put a number of statements on the screen, and there's a problem with each one of them. Now, your job is to figure out what's wrong, why it is wrong, and then suggest how to fix it. It's going to be fun. Here's the first statement. According to the Smithsonian Knowledge Encyclopedia, the Egyptian Sphinx was constructed around 2550 BCE. The Egyptian Sphinx was constructed around 2550 BCE. Well, the problem is with the date, 2550. The global flood occurred about 200 years after that date. So what are the chances that the Sphinx survived the flood? Unless, of course, you think that that's how the Sphinx lost his nose. I never get bored of watching that clip. <laughs> So yes, David Splain has a very different idea of what fun is compared to the rest of us. I suppose it is fun. It's certainly laughter inducing, but unintentionally so. It's certainly not fun for the reasons David Splain would wish. But yes, here we have a talk all about the organization's history. And David Splain is going to be arguing that the organization has only ever gotten better with the passage of time. And in making this argument, he's invoking Isaiah 60 verse 17, which according to him 
is describing an organisation. What is it with governing body members insisting that various verses are describing organisational arrangements? Well, now this reference to overseers and task assigners, that sounds like organisation, doesn't it? But after quite a bit of dissension and disputing by Paul and Barnabas with them, it was arranged for Paul, Barnabas, and some of the others to go up to the apostles and elders in Jerusalem regarding this issue. Sounds like an organization to me. They are clearly desperate, the governing body, to make the Bible sound like it's describing not just an organization, but their organization. Let's face it, this isn't about anything spiritual. This isn't a spiritual arrangement. This is a corporate arrangement. The very phrase governing body isn't from the Bible. It's a corporate term that the organization adopted in the 1940s and came to apply to, first of all, the board of directors and later on to an overarching governance. The phrase, though, governing body, not a scriptural phrase. Basically, when we're talking about organization, we're talking about control. Tony Morris, David Splain, the rest of the governing body, they all want to have control. And the model that best describes their flavor of control is the corporate model where you have overseers, <laughs> where you have people in charge who give out tasks and those tasks, those assignments have to be done in order for the organization to make progress. That's a corporate model. It has nothing to do with spirituality or someone's relationship with God. It has everything to do with furthering the needs of an organization. And in this particular instance, he's pointing to Isaiah 60 verse 17 insisting that Isaiah was using essentially corporate language. Let's go to Bible Hub and see how proper translations of the Bible render this same verse. New International Version. Instead of bronze, I will bring you gold and silver in place of iron. Instead of wood, I will bring you bronze and iron in place of stones. I will make peace your governor and well-being your ruler. So, governor, ruler. New Living Translation. I will exchange your bronze for gold, your iron for silver, your wood for bronze, and your stones for iron. I will make peace your leader and righteousness your ruler. English Standard Version, skipping to the end. I will make your overseers peace and your taskmasters righteousness. So at least one translation is saying something along the lines of how Watchtower phrases things. Berean Study Bible, skipping to the end. I will appoint peace as your governor and righteousness as your ruler. It seems that the consensus in proper translations is to use the phrase ruler or governor in this verse. You can understand, again, why the makers of the New World Translation, given the choice, would go for something a bit more corporate. But you don't get to do that and then point to the language as evidence that the Bible writers approve of your way of doing things, which is essentially what David Splain has just done here. It's quite a cheap trick, isn't it? <laughs> to write your own Bible using your preferred language and then use that language as a basis to support your authority. That's what we call circular reasoning, isn't it? So we're being tricked and manipulated right out of the blocks in David Splain's talk he is going to try and argue that this organization has gradually been refined over the years. And from humble beginnings, we've ended up with something that's marvelous, something that is way, way better than what we had before. 
As we're going to see, though, in David Splain's own arguments, it's possible to see holes in this logic. It's possible to see that organisational changes haven't always been for the better. And actually, the more we look at the organisation's history, the more we see evidence of how man-made and unremarkable the whole thing is.